So good morning or good night, depending on where you are, and welcome to another joint album review of the Shield Dude in a Couch. And again, I'm joined by JC Rock and Metal Reviews. And today we are tackling an album that just came out a few days ago, and it's the new Coheed and Cambria album called, uh, it has a long title, it's called Baxis 2, A Window of the Waking Mind. And for those of you that follow Coheed and Cambria, you know that they usually have concept albums. And this is the follow on to Baxis 1, which came out in 2018. So this is the longest gap that the band has had without like new music. And uh, we're here to discuss about it. So first of all, John, good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> Good, good. Okay, so yes. yeah, this album cover, like when you see it, you think sci-fi. You know what? My, my first impression was that uh, show Stranger Things. <laughs> that's that's kind of like what I thought the first one, like looking at this album. Yeah, yeah but if you see, there's a character yeah. right here that really looks like a mixture of Darth Vader and the, and the Baron from Dune. Yeah. A little bit, but yeah, uh, this is an album that uh, first of all, we're going to give our first impressions of the album. So uh, I'll have John start with his first impressions upon the listen to, to this album. Okay. So uh, my first impressions, well, let, let me start by saying that uh, this is a band I haven't really listened to before. I kind of came into this as a newcomer and I started by uh, listening to the singles that were released. So, <clears throat> so I think this, so the first singles were like Liars Club and there were a couple other ones. I kind of thought of them as like a pop band. They were more like, you know, they had this very like modern pop production. And I researched them. They said, you know, they kind of like were just describe themselves as like a progressive metal band or progressive rock. And at first I didn't feel that because I thought like the singles were very poppy. And now I did, I do like the song uh, Liar's Club. I mean, I think that's a really good song. And like, like Shoulders, that was another single, I believe. I like the songs, but... You know, at first, uh, you know, this band kind of took a while to kind of for me to get into. Um, as far, far as my first impressions, I thought it was uh, enjoyable. There were some songs that were like a lot better than other others. I liked like the the progier ones, which I'll talk about in more detail a little yeah. later. But I thought it was uh, it was good. And then I uh, went back and listened to the. Uh, the, the album before this, which was part one, and actually I thought that one, you know, maybe like a little more like like progier. Like I think that this is more like a shorter songs were more like a pop sound. So uh, that was kind of my impression. I think they were moving in more of like a modern pop uh, direction. Yeah, um, yeah. No, the, the my first impression, uh, unlike you, you know, I've been listening to the band since the 2000s. Yes, and yes. this is a band that their first four albums are revered as classics. I have the fourth one right there. That's No World for Tomorrow, yeah. which is my favorite Cohen and Cambria album. And at first they were more a prog rock band with emo tendencies because Claudio Sanchez vocals can be quite emo at times. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. And they always had that sci-fi theme almost like their first full albums they follow a story of the armory wars uh yes. but i don't think that you need to to enjoy the music you don't need to like follow the story mm -hmm. because i i can't sit here and say oh i know the story from head to toe i really don't mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm more of I, I i love the albums but i haven't read the comic book so i know there's some diehard coheed and cambria fans that read everything but i don't think you need to on like follow the story completely to enjoy the music and yes. i think that's what's good about it and those first four albums they were classics then they released a few albums that were good but weren't as hailed as the first four albums then they had a album in 2015 i think it was follow something with the sun and it was their first non album that wasn't a a a concept album so yes. it was just a batch of songs and then they came back with Baxis and Baxis one and two is this basically the story of the album 
is about two star-crossed lovers that are fighting an evil empire, tyrannical empire, and running for their lives in, in, the, in the future. And Baxi's one is more, there's some pop elements in it, which they've had almost always, but it's a more of a prog rock album. On this one, on first impression, when I first, I, I, I was first listening to the singles, there were some singles like Comatose that really didn't impress me. I thought that Comatose was like way too bubbly, mm. way too poppy, and uh, it really didn't do anything for me. I, yeah. I did li like, The Liar's Club is a great song. I, I must yeah. admit that that single, and Shoulders has like a, also like a very classic rock guitar to its sound. So, I was uh, when I was listening to singles. I'm thinking. Uh, I was thinking. I think they're gonna take it more of like an arena rock type of feel with some modern pop production. So after listening to the album uh, on first impression, I can say that uh, this is a tale of uh, of like the half of the the first songs and the last three songs of the album. So the first songs are more pop, shorter songs. And the last three uh, uh, songs of the album is where they embrace more of their progginess. And I love it more. Yes. So uh, I think if they hadn't had that uh, uh, last three songs at the end, my score would have been lower, but obviously that's at the end. But yeah, that was my first impression of the album. Uh, I thought it, it's, you know, it's uh, it has a lot of like, pop uh, modern production in it and I think they're trying to appeal to a younger generation uh, and in an interview uh, Claudio Sanchez stated that uh, sometimes he feels that older bands try to release material to please the fans and he's like I don't want to do that I want to uh, take some risk and do something that I want to do and if the fans like it great if not no so it definitely sounds like, you know, obviously fans would like to go them to the <laughs> first four albums like sound, yeah. but uh, I, I think they're embraced more the the poppier tendencies of the band on this one. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's how I felt as well. So, yeah, so now let's go and let's talk about the tracks that we like more in depth and about the things that we didn't like about the album. So I'll have John start again. Okay. Um, so the, I'll talk about like two songs. Um, one of the, the the popular songs that I liked was the Liars Club, and maybe because they did have like actually two versions as singles as an acoustic version, and I remember listening to both of them. But I, I think it's just very catchy. It, it's kind of like pop punk, and. I don't know why, well, I do, I do know why, but it reminds me of like Michael Jackson <laughs> a little bit because they have that line, you know, like, baby, are, are you okay? okay? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, that, that always made me think of like Smooth Criminal and of course, oh, yeah. like the, the vocalist well, kind of sings like Michael Jackson at times as well. So that made me thought of that, but I think the Liars Club was the best of their like poppier songs on the album. Now, as for uh, out of the last three songs, I would say my favorite is uh, track number eleven, "Ladders of Supremacy." Ooh, amazing this, track! This is a this is a really great song. It's just like a progressive rock song. It still has some of that modern pop production, but it's just very enjoyable. It's a longer song, and you know they mix in all these like different sounds and heavy parts, and there's all like complex admin, you know instrumentation. There's like some electronic parts, and just like some really great vocals and just really great guitar playing more on like the lat the latter ha later half of the song and out of all the the songs that that's probably like my favorite it's just a really great just like progressive rock song so that's my favorite um as for the ones that i didn't like most of the ones on the front half of the album i think like for example, a song track number 10, Our Love, that's kind of like filler, it's more of like yeah. a It's like a one minute track. and 46, like, sappy love song. Yeah, yeah, so the, that one I didn't think was great. Um, yeah, like like you said, uh, the single Comatose, that one didn't really, you know, you know I didn't think that one was great at, at all. Um, and the other, the other ones are pretty great. I think like Love Murder 1, that, that one's 
you know, it's okay, kind of has like a funky beat. And, yeah, you know, it has like some synth on it because uh, is it? Uh, John, what's what's that, that, I think that they went too much with the auto tune on that song. So. Oh yeah. What? But I wonder what's happening today. I I feel like the eighties are making a huge comeback. Yeah. Like in the I've been reviewing albums the last weeks and I'm like there's synth. There's there's some albums that have some Depeche Mode in them. So I'm like, wow, it's I, I'm really being noticed. And so it's it's interesting that the 80s is... Oh, yeah, it could be, um, you know, one of those, like, trends. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think Stranger Things is helping. Yeah, oh, that, that too, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you uh, with the tracks that you're saying. Uh, for So for me, in terms of, like, the best songs on the album... Uh, you you mentioned one that I love that it's the uh, the ladders of supremacy. That one's like the riffing on that song. I'm like, if they did more of this on this album, it would have been higher. It would have been more enjoyable for me. Yes. But I also think that the album closer, window of the waking mind, yeah. which is like a eight minute, like it's a song that it has a lot of like different parts and it's very story driven. So in the story, I, I read a bit about the story, you know, uh, the two star cross lovers, I think they have a child. And uh, on that waking of the mind, they're, they're talking like to the child, like, you know, the, this world is not easy. Sometimes you gotta fight, but there's a great storytelling and the song, you can tell that it's very well structured, how it goes. Yeah. From story to story and it's it's very uh it's kind of over the top but you know it works uh because this is a very flamboyant story you know very mm. out there yeah but but i really like how that ends the album and it ends the album uh with a rendition of old flames which is a song from Baxis one and actually the, mm -hmm. the album starts the embers of fire which is an in intro with part of that song as well, uh, okay. which, which I think it's the song on the other album where they finally meet and, and fall in love and this starts to run. So other songs that I thought were interesting and good is Beautiful Losers is the album, the true album opener. And that one to me had more of that old Coheed and Cambria sound. Yeah. Uh, so that to me was, uh, was good because it had that old sound of the band. Uh, I also thought the song Blood uh, was very interesting as a, it was more like a power ballad, but the, the lyrics were really good. He's talking about, uh, I think they're talking about their song and how he's their own blood. So it's a very touching, emotive song. And I liked it that they didn't abuse autotune on that one. So now I'm going to talk about the songs that I thought weren't that good. To me, one of the worst songs on the album is called Batman. The lyrics are atrocious. It's abusing autotune. Uh, I think there's a part in the song where this sounds like a trap singer. They go like, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And uh, I like, why? Uh, also, you mentioned Our Love. I think if you take Our Love out of the album, it would be fine. Like I'm like it's one minute and forty six seconds of nothing. There's yes. nothing about that song. Like it sounds like a bloated intro, if you will. So I, yeah. I would take that one out. Uh, another one that I thought was not great was as disappearing act. And in a disappearing act, uh, uh, it's more danceable uh, song. Uh, sounds like uh, '90s dance music with some rock. But there's a lot of like auto tune effects that really took me out of the song. Like there's a few songs, like Love Murder One, when it begins with this uh, with the auto tune. I, I, I kid you not, it sounded like Justin fucking Bieber, <laughs> <laughs> and and that really detracted me. But it's not a you know it's not a uh, an amazing album, but it's not a bad album to me. Uh, at the end of the day, this is, it's an okay album. You know, it has some great parts like at the end and some parts in the middle that are like, eh. 
But I really enjoyed like you, the Liars Club. I thought that single was so catchy, right. and, and and especially the 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 chorus where he's like, "La, like, would you rather if I lie to you?" So it's it's. Yeah. I thought that one out of the popular ones is the one that works the most, and I, I, I I'm not sure if that was the first single. I think it was, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it was that one or Comatose, but maybe. Yeah, I, I'm not sure which one was the first single, but I think out of the singles, that is the one uh, that, uh, you know, that's the best one for me. So now we're going to give our last impressions of the album and, you know, the score of what we thought at the end after listening to this for a few days. So I'll have John start again. Okay. Um, as a final score, I think. Uh, it has some filler. It could have been like trimmed down a little bit. I would have liked a little more of that like proggier stuff from the last three songs. But, you know, there are some good stuff, you know, like, like I said, Liars Club, that's a decent song. So they did, uh, you know, some of the popular stuff was, you know, was okay, but some of it didn't work. So I, I would say a seven out of 10 for me. It, you know, it has some good, but there's, there's lots of room for improvement, you know. So that's my score, of seven out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, going with what John just said, so for me, uh, I've been a match, uh, huge Coheed and Cambria fan for years now. I've seen them live, so uh, I know they're very talented. Uh, but they have a rabid fan base, and the on their last albums, they gone more from the, they like stayed away from the prog. It embraced that more arena pop rock sound. And on the first Baxis, I, I, I love that. I thought that was a great album. But on this one, I really missed more of the prog. I thought that some, uh, you know, shorter songs, really poppy. I really hate Out of Tune. <laughs> I think it, if you use it a little bit, but when it's like uh, so overused, and especially I don't think Claudio, Sanchez needs needs it really. I, I don't. I think his voice is fine. You know, uh, there's some artists that might need it, but I think it some it, it got me out of some songs when they abused the auto tune. Uh, I really love the f- final three songs that close the album. Uh, that to me saved the album from being medi- uh, mediocre to okay to good. Uh, at the end of the day. I have to agree with you and give this album a seven out of 10. Uh, I think if they would have like trimmed down some, some of the fat and maybe did a little bit more prog, this would have been a more enjoyable album for me. So yeah, seven out of 10, my final score for the new Coheed and Cambria. So uh, we wanna know, uh, what did you think about Baxis 2, uh, Window to the Waking Mind? Did you like it? Uh, do you prefer when Coheed and Cambria had more of a prog rock sound? A comment, what were your favorite tracks? We would like to know. And don't forget to subscribe to JC Rock and Metal Reviews. He has some great uh, reviews on his channel as well. He does a lot of like classic rock as well. And he does some uh, anniversary reviews like myself. And uh, coming up next for us, we'll have a review uh, our next collaboration will be in his channel. We still don't know what it will be, but we will let you guys know what it will be when the time comes. So uh, keep an eye out for that. So uh, on that note, like uh, JC, any any last words for? Uh... Uh, no, no. Just uh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, subscribe. You know, subscribe to Hector. Subscribe to my channel. We do similar. Uh, stuff so if you like my my stuff you like his stuff and you know vice versa so uh and, you know definitely uh, thank you for having me here yeah. no of course yeah it's 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 great collaborating and i i, I like the, doing this like joint reviews uh where people you know get to we have to compare the music so coming up next on my channel a quick update for people we i have free interviews next week that you shouldn't miss i have a uh, interview with a band called Clifford Hoyt. Uh, they're a screamo band that plays some interesting that's interesting things. Then uh, I have some a pop punk band called Discord Theory from Tampa. An interview with them that's coming out on Wednesday. The other ones on Tuesday. 
And on first day, I have an interview with Kill Press, and he's a instrumentalist, uh, multi instrumentalist from Sweden. And don't miss that interview. We really talk about like some really issues that are being happening uh, this week. So very interesting. So uh, keep an eye out for that. So until next time, this is Hector the Shield doing a couch and JC Rock and Metal Reviews. And we'll see you on the next collaboration. Thank you. Right. And good night.